Sporting immortality does not come easily. There are challenges that seem insurmountable, times that can't be beaten, distances that cannot be achieved. Oh, it's huge, it's massive! Records that can't be broken. Unbelievable! Things that science tell you is impossible. And then suddenly, it happens. Another 10 for coming in. The barrier is broken, the glass ceiling shattered. History is made. A new world record for you, Bolt. The impossible becomes possible. But to do that, to break new ground, it takes one very special individual. October 2019 the streets of Vienna, the time and the place for a chance of history. Could Eliud Kipchoge become the first man to break the two-hour barrier for the marathon? I was privileged to be there. The sun's coming out, it's burning the fog away, and we've already got crowds, especially around here at the finish, who are all expectant of history being made today. Years of work had gone into the Ineos 159 challenge to try and run a marathon in under two hours. A huge team behind the scenes had left no stone unturned. But ultimately, it came down to one man. And the clock. The story of this history maker begins thousands of miles away in the west of Kenya. In Eldoret, farming is a way of life, but running comes a close second, and they start them young. We normally run in the morning to school, and then four o'clock or three o'clock we are, we are out, and it's game time, so we run around. The way the community are as uh, brought up, because they are brought up in such a hardship life, whereby you struggle so much to, to earn a living. Maybe you work in the farm, you, you do a lot of casual works. We used to do everything by running. We were running to school, and of course we are far away from school, maybe around three, four kilometers away. You run so that you cannot get late. It was always good when you get to school uh, earlier. Elliot was just a normal boy. He didn't take running that seriously. It was a means to an end, a way of getting to and from school. But it was a meeting with his neighbour, Patrick Sang, an Olympic and World Championship silver medalist, that changed his life. You know, in Kenya, we have so many athletes. So he was one of one, those athletes that came for a training programme. After a while, I, I developed interest to get to know who he was. What struck me then was, uh, you know, a guy who is persistent, somebody who wanted to, to succeed in running. Humble beginnings. But this relationship between coach and athlete was to become hugely significant for young Elliot. I see Patrick like a father because I, be, 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 I was not lucky to have to see my father. But uh, uh, that's why Patrick is my life coach, he's my sports coach. So it's, it, it teaches me many things on how to handle life. In 2003, he surprised everyone by becoming the junior world cross-country champion. Elliot would not fear taking on the older, tougher uh, characters, and he did that to pretty well. Kipchoge of Kenya, has he got enough? He's been in the lead a long time. What a performance there by Kipchoge. When he came to the senior category, hey, it was all it. Uh, running the 5,000 meters like uh, most of our guys have never run, I can tell you. And then on the track that summer, this shy, hard-working teenager became the world champion over 5,000 meters. Suddenly, everyone knew the name Kipchoge. He was just 18 years old. Kipchoge, the world junior record holder, still there, Bikili. The 10,000 metre gold medalist still there. John Kibbon trying to get onto them. El Garouz has run his race, or has he? Has he got anything left? El Garouz trying to get there. Kipchoge, the junior's there. El Garouz is trying to get to the line. Kenya wins it. Kipchoge takes the gold medal. To me, I think one of the things that uh, separate him from the thousands of 
people try and, and probably fall by the wayside is that he has a serious respect for the sport. Success followed. He wasn't unbeatable, but there was a steady flow of medals and titles, including 5,000 meter Olympic bronze in Athens and a silver in Beijing. But after missing out for a place in the Kenyan team for the London Olympics, Elliot decided it was time for a change. It was the first time that he missed the, 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 the Olympics and uh, it was heartbreaking because essentially you know that he's always given his best and here it comes, something just cropped up within the race, finishes number five and he's out of it. That came the changing point again now, the switch uh, to the marathon. From 5,000 metres to 26.2 miles. A decision to switch from running on the track to running marathons. A decision that would change his life. Elliot's marathon record since his debut in 2013 is almost perfect. He's lost just once in 12 races and he saved some of his best performances for the British crowds, winning four times in London and beating everyone on the way. Cruising now to another victory in the London Marathon. He is the greatest ever, by a long way. And as he kept winning, he kept getting faster. In 2016, he finally got his Olympic gold, dominating the field in Rio. Kipchoge is the Olympic champion. And two years later, he broke the world record in Berlin, running two hours, one minute and 39 seconds. He was officially the quickest marathon runner in history. But could he do what no one had ever done and run one in under two hours? You're expecting this guy to do a sub two? Yet nobody has ever done that. And you want this guy to run below that. And no human, yet science had infor, has informed us that no one is going to do this until 2075. And the guy is saying, I'm going to do this. Scientists may have predicted it would take another 50 years to break this record, but Elliot didn't agree. He knew this was something he could do. Getting a human being to make history and actually uh, inspiring the whole generation. You know, a human being is about this conscience. And many, many people actually are stuck in their conscience that they need to live. They are living on what they have only and that's enough. So I was uh, running with me and my old team. We were training and aiming to run 159 in order, in order to, to, make, to actually uh, remove that, uh, those that things in, in, in human beings' minds, that, uh, they, that they are not limited and they can do whatever they want. He made an attempt in Monza in 2017, missing out by just 25 seconds. So to actually achieve it, to run 26.2 miles in less than two hours, everything would need to be perfect. So where to start in planning for something no one had done before? For Elliot, at his base in Eldoret, life for him and the team was simple. They had one focus. But despite the pressure, he remained unchanged. Elliot was just Elliot. Our life here is simple. And, uh, we wake up in the morning, go for a morning run, come back, so spend your time to go for massage, you go for massage or you relax, go for exercises. Open, close. Two, close. Three, close. Here in the training Four. camp, we have the, the, the work that has been to be done. Every athlete, we do our general cleaning. And Elliot is part of the team that is doing the general cleaning. That's motivating the young athletes that no matter how good or great you are in the world, other things still matter as a human being. By nature, we are, we are farmers. You know, when you are young, you are, so, you are being encouraged to, to work hard and buy maybe one animal or two to show that uh, you are really working hard. Uh, this is called Sharon. <laughs> when people hear the name Helwood Kipchoge, they think that this is somebody different from any other human being, but Helwood is really humble guy, he's supportive. I can say Helwood is my role model. When I'm training, I normally say I want to be like Helwood. When he gets into the business, it is business. No joking around, no monkey business, it is that. Behind the scenes, a huge technical team was assembled to plan this attempt at history. 
Vienna was chosen as the location because the Austrian capital had the perfect temperature and humidity in October. There was a small chance of rain and it offered the flattest and straightest roads. A team of 41 pacemakers was assembled with some of the best distance runners from around the world. They would run in Y formation with Elliot just behind to ensure minimal wind resistance. He had cutting edge shoes designed specifically for the challenge. Getting his nutrition and hydration right during the race were key. Nothing was overlooked. Elliot was ready. It all came down to him. We have liftoff. Apollo Kipchoge is up and away. And the challenge, very easy to say, to run 26.2 miles, 42.2 kilometers in under two hours. Very easy to say, rather more difficult to achieve. And they're on their way on the Reichsbrücke, traveling over the Danube, and they will be heading into the Prater very, very shortly indeed. Elliot is um, just completely relaxed. He is just in a state of flow. He's just locking in to the pace. Really, no mental energy is going to be wasted right now. We're going to talk about the pacing, but just give us a sense of how revolutionary this open V formation is. Well, it just looks like it shouldn't work. They're running with this wide front, and, uh, and it's a reverse V. And you think, well, how can that work? But everyone tells me that it reduces drag on Elliot, and, uh, and they've done all the testing that they need to do to, to ensure that it's actually the, the optimal formation. He is a phenomenal person as well as a, a phenomenal athlete, and there he is just bunched in behind the pacemakers. The absolute trust between all eight people at any one time. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, the formation will remain the same throughout each of the teams. And the one constant throughout of all this, of course, is Elliot himself. Elliot Kipchoge there in the white. It was the perfect start. Then the first change to the pacemakers team, who rotate in and out nine times. Some of the best runners in the world were in Vienna, including 1500 meter world champion Bernard Legat and the Inga Britson brothers from Norway. Their job, to keep Elliot running at a steady pace and reduce wind resistance on him. One of the big landmarks coming up is the five kilometer split. Ed, how is he looking? I think he looks pretty good, but then he always looks pretty good. Yeah. So <laughs> let's see what, you know, they, they say in Kenya, the race starts at 35. Um, if he's still looking good at 35, I think he's got a, you know, a, a great shot. You know, right now, he looks super relaxed. And it doesn't look like uh, this pace is hurting him too much, but let's, let's see how he goes. Through the first five kilometers, and Elliot was on target. To run a sub two hour marathon, he had to run 14 minutes and 13 seconds for every 5K, which means running four minutes, 34.5 seconds for every mile. Imagine that at your local park run. His speed was incredible. Team three just about to take over, the captain, Brett Robinson. And uh, again, we'll introduce you to the members of uh, team three, but it's again another very smooth transition. There we can say Herrick, Henrik Ingebrigtsen, Philip as well, and Jakob center of picture, all fresh from the World Championships in Doha. Again, marks out of 10, Ed, for that transition. I think that one was the best one yet. He'll be thinking right now, this is, you know, he's on schedule. And uh, he doesn't look, I don't know what you think, Shane, he doesn't yeah. look like he's been, he's having too much trouble here. Oh, no, I mean, well, first of all, Elliot is just a beautiful runner. And even when um, he does break down, it's, it's very, very small increments. But um, the fact that he's within seconds of his goal predicted time um, right now is is not a big factor is if we saw that the splits were starting to drift backwards continuously but they're not they're just fluctuating by a second second faster second on maybe one second slower that's really nothing to worry about right now um, as long as the overall time is where we need it to be is what is important well the pacemakers continue to do their job and they have been expertly put together and assembled by spencer barden who is uh, a very well-known figure in marathon running circles he's the uh, elite director for the london marathon he's been uh, heavily involved in choosing and training and forming these pacemakers and he's now with crystal first things first spencer is it going to plan so far all is going to plan so uh early early days yet still a long way to go but the, the exchanges have gone very well so far uh elliot's on, on pace so uh so far so good 
I'm interested in the conceptualising of the formations. Can you take us through that process? Yeah, so we've done a lot of work uh, in the build-up to this event in terms of looking at the formations, what was best for Elliot, what were given the most uh, protection out on the course. So we've come up with a... It's not a conventional formation. Uh, we've done a lot of testing with the athletes at the test event and here in the last couple of days. Um, but we've got a fantastic group of world-class athletes. So they're, 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 they're relishing the opportunity and they're, they're working well in the formation, communicating with each other. Uh, and so far, it's uh, all going very well. And the crucial parts come a bit later. Absolutely, yeah. We go uh, when the athletes start to get tired, and Elliot starts to get tired in the latter stages. That's when we need to really, really focus on uh, on, on you know, what we're doing. So certainly the last sort of ten k, you know, thirty k onwards. That's when it's going to get going to get tough. But we're, we're in a good place. Fifty minutes in, and everything was going to plan. The handovers between each of the pacemaker teams had been smooth. Elliot looked strong. Vienna had been chosen because of the course. It was flat and straight, but also because of the weather conditions. So when the heavens opened, that wasn't part of the plan. Just a quick weather update. There was a 10% chance of rain forecast for today, and I can confirm that it has just started to rain now. So if we see one or two splits and spats on the, um, the camera lens, that is now real rain. Halfway, the conditions were getting worse, but Elliot was still on target. He was 11 seconds inside the sub two hour marathon pace. Now things would get really tough. I do see a little bit of strain maybe on his face. He's kind of puffing his cheeks, maybe doing a little smiling. It means he's working hard, um, as it should be. This should be hard. Um, but I can see some signs that I didn't see about 5K ago that he is he's working. I think he's, he's already working. Yeah, I think he's having a little difficult a little patch. Patch, here. yeah. Radzi's with Chris Froome. Chris, how much are you enjoying watching Elliot do this? It is phenomenal. It is, it is. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, I mean, it's just incredible to watch him. It looks like he's not even breathing. Just He's just gliding over, over, the, over the road. It's just it's amazing to be here and to be part of this, part of this atmosphere. And hopefully we'll be witnessing his, history being made today. And to that point, you're Kenyan born. What do you think it will mean to the people of Kenya for one of their own to make history? It, it would be incredible. I mean, obviously, Kenya's quite well known already for, for its marathon runners, but to have someone do something monumental as this, basically breaking barriers, showing that the impossible is, is doable, and um, especially coming from such uh, humble beginnings, I think it would be inspiring a lot of, a lot of people around the world. Ten kilometres to go, Elliot was struggling. The effect of running at this speed for so long was clear on his face. He would have to dig deep the time could so easily slip away. He has to be thinking right now, and I'm sure this is a version of what he's thinking. If not now, when? Well, this is all about Elliot Kipchoge, of course, and what a moment we've talk been talking about what might be going through his mind. One of the things he might be thinking about is his wife and family. Grace, his wife, who has never seen him race live in the flesh before. Well, she is now, and she's with Radzi. She is indeed. Grace, I see you watching your husband up on the screen. What goes through your head when you see him run? Uh, I'm kind of nervous, but I'm also excited that uh, he has tried to break the uh, two-hour barrier of marathon. I'm really excited. I'm happy for him. Yeah. You've also brought your three children along as well. How are they enjoying it? They are very excited. They have never been to a race where they are that runs. He's going to be an example for all future athletes, but not just athletes, his messages to the world of, you know, what are you possible, you know, what is your, what are you capable of doing and what is your possible best self? I feel very nervous right now because anyone who's ever run a marathon will know that the last few miles, uh, anything can happen and the wheels can come off. He looks really good, he's hurting. You know, you just, you're just hoping that he's got this. When well, the conversation first started for the sub two effort, I said, no way, no way in my lifetime will I witness the sub two hour marathon. I truly did not believe I would be able to witness something like this. Science said it couldn't be done. We all thought it was impossible. 65 years on from the first four minute mile, the last great distance barrier to be broken, Elliot had a kilometer left to run in his own attempt at history. But could he do it? He is almost there. He has one hand on history here in Vienna. 
There's Grace, his wife, looking on. She's never seen him race before in the flesh, remember. What a moment for her. What a moment for... What a moment for the children. The pace car is gone. We've lost the laser. He's it's getting now, One It's tail. now oh. all down to Elliot and the pace The gloves are off. He's this getting is, quicker. He's racing right now. This is, this is racing. Well, this is true racing. Shalane knows what this feels like through the streets of uh, Central Park in New York, whether it's in Berlin or London. But today is all about Vienna. Today is all about Elliot Kipchoge. We're down to the last couple of minutes to bring him home. Ed, some final thoughts from you. I'm overjoyed that particularly this man has got to do this. Uh, it's not just the barrier being broken. It's something that has existed in this person's head for so long. And I'm, it's so gratifying to watch, watch him achieve that. He's almost there. He can see the finish line. That's the view from Elliot Kipchoge. You can see the finish line where we are looming into view. 1.57 and approaching 158, I think we can say with some certainty there now he he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's right going there. He's Go on. to move away. Come on, he says. Come on, this is it. Shalina, final this thought from you. This is incredible. Elliot's performance is such a gift to the world. His running is a gift to all of us. I feel so blessed to be here today. I feel like I hope everyone can hear me smiling through this microphone right now. I cannot stop smiling. 500 meters to go. He has the Hauptalle to himself. He's All the pacemakers have let him go. As Ed said, he is sprinting into the history books here. They're cheering him on. 400 meters to go. Let's bring him home. This is history unfolding on the streets of Vienna this morning. It's a Saturday run like we've never seen before. Listen at the noise, the crowd getting right behind him. Goodness me, 300 metres to go. He can see the finish line here. Neil Armstrong we had on the moon in 1969. We had Roger Bannister, the four-minute mile 65 years ago. Edmund Hillary, the first man to climb Everest in 1953. We have one minute to go. Elliot Kipchoge is on his way here. It's this, humble, be a this humble farmer who used to run two miles to school every day and back. He used to go to the nearest town on his bike to sell milk at the local market. And now, through hard work and discipline, he's pointing. Come on, he says. Elliot Kipchoge has the hand of history on his shoulder. He has less than 200 metres to go. Elliot Kipchoge, let's keep an eye on the clock into the final 20 seconds. Eliot Kipchoge. Whoa! He's got his shoulder. 140. Oh, oh, oh. 140. The unofficial. Oh, line. there's his wife. Eliot, Eliot Kipchoge storms into the history books in Vienna. 159.40, the unofficial time. The first man to run a marathon in under two hours. One final lung busting stride for Kipchoge. One giant leap for human endeavor. And you know. Kipchoge was right. No human is limited. He has done it. It has taken 65 years for, for a human being to make history in sport. After Roger Panister made history in 1954, I'm the happiest man to run under two hours in order to inspire many people to tell people that uh, no human is limited, you can do it. I'm expecting more of the athletes in peace all over the world to run under two hours after, after, after today. I'm still in the moon, I'm yet to come down to heart. I mean, uh, really excited. I mean, happy for him, for what he has achieved. He's actually inspired all of us that uh, we can stretch our limits in our lives and uh, we can do more than we think we can do. That was one time that my tears flew down this is a career climax that you feel you've been with this guy from when he was down there, when he walked all the way to the level that he is now at the top of the world and doing every, something that no other human being has been able to do. It feels good. He had traveled with, for the first time with his family because it, he knew that this is one of the most important things in his career. It was really emotional to see my kids crossing the finishing line. And it was really novel for me for, for, to have them there and to learn something that uh, if you actually concentrate on something, automatically you will achieve it. He'd done it. Elliot Kipchoge had broken the seemingly impossible record. One hour, 
59 minutes and 40 seconds to run 26.2 miles. He really had shown that no human is limited. Back home in Kenya, they celebrated their new hero. Across the world, as millions of people watched on, the congratulations kept coming. After running uh, uh, under two hours, then I, uh, a lot of comments, including Barack Obama, came in. And I was happy, you know, and it, it, that was my highest moment of being happy. Barack Obama is a very good example of uh, no human is limited. But despite his incredible achievement, Elliot remained just Elliot. Celebrity status? Not him. He does not even celebrate. You know, if it was any other guy, it would have been a carnival party in Nairobi and in Eldoret. Oh, oh, he came back. <laughs> the guys in Nairobi were waiting for him. They knew that he's here when he was already in his house in Eldoret. And they are mad. You know, they're like, OK, how can he do that? <laughs> Who does that? The important thing is, it's inspiration. It's not fame. So when I saw all the footage uh, from all over the country, from Mombasa, Nairobi, Eldoret, Malaba, all across the whole country in Kenya, then I was really happy. So what next? What is there left for him to achieve? The London Marathon and the Tokyo Olympics were supposed to be his career swan song, but the coronavirus pandemic has delayed that. For now, in lockdown like the rest of the world, Elliot is still training back home in Kenya for that moment he can return to the roads. And we hope that will be when the London Marathon finally goes ahead on October the 4th. But whenever he does return, he returns as a history maker. He returns as the greatest marathon runner ever. He returns as the greatest. Elliot has a belief that when you're climbing a tree, every branch, once you are done with one branch, you go to the next branch. You'll take on anything, anything. I can tell you that it wouldn't be out of this world to see 159 on a normal course. What motivates me is the love of sport and how sport can transform this world. I've learned that uh, you can use sport to actually unite all the people in the whole world. Elliot has his own reasons to run, as do the thousands of you who are still training for the marathon and other mass participation events. Many of you do it to raise money for special causes, and there is still something you can do to help make up the £4 billion shortfall that British charities are facing this year.